Hi guys, what do you guys know about Black History Month? Well, I don't know very much about it, but I'm, I've been aware of it for quite a lot of years and I'm a member of Unite the Union and we always celebrate Black History Month and we get given information each day of Black History Month. Um, not a huge amount. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, I think that uh, it's often quite tokenised, so it'll be quite like surface level. Um, oh, it's Black History Month. Let's like put a picture of Rosa Parks up, but they don't. I, I, often, I don't think it's. Um, yeah, I think I'm not very immersed in it. I don't think people are like encouraged to be very immersed in it. Do you think more could be done to do that? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, I think there should be more um, diversity within Black History Month itself. I think Martin Luther King is great, but let's expand <laughs> that a little bit. Um, and yeah, I think. Just with anything less kind of surface level. Um, so what I know about Black History Month is, you know, it's a time to celebrate the contributions of black people um, around the world, essentially. Um, I know in the States, like, it's a celebration of how much we've contributed to society, um, either through, like, creativity, through, like, inventions and science, uh, just a celebration of black people and black culture around the world. Um, I mean, to me, Black History Month is just kind of celebrating, obviously, all the great things that a lot of kind of history and um, great black people have done, but also it's about remembering just the stuff that black people and people of colour have gone through as well. Um, so it's a good mixture of both. It's a happy and it's a sad time, you know. Um, I know that Black History Month is a time where everyone can um, appreciate what is that black people have done in the past but also sympathise with what they've gone through and it's a time where we can really look at what it is that the struggles that they're going through because I feel like people don't talk about it often enough. So uh, Black History Month um, for me means celebrating you know, the African culture to be specific. So I'm from South Africa and in South Africa we have, a, we have a, a similar day, right, which is called Heritage Day, which is a day where all the African families, right, gather together and have um, sort of like a celebration of the day, right? This is a day where we we will get to wear our African attires as per as per tribe, right, yeah. that you come from and stuff. Because we're a variety of tribes. There's a variety. There's a tribe of Tosa, Zulu, Tsohana, Ndebele, you name the uh, the lots, right? So we tend to gather and have uh, family gatherings, and then we celebrate that day. We celebrate our tribe. We cook our African food or traditional food, mm -hmm. to be specific. We, you know, we brew our own African. Um, brewery, beers and stuff, yeah. So that's what it means to me, you know, it means celebrating your, your being, do you know what I mean, your... Yeah. Uh, well, not really much, because I've, um, I've been around UK for a while, to be honest, but like, most of the time, my, my knowledge about Black History Month has been mainly from like universities, like I know that we get together and then we have like social events and like try to learn more about Black History, although like, I also, I've also tried like watching like documentaries, especially during like the pandemic, like when Netflix had some of the things of like the Malcolm X stuff, I watched, I watched some episodes, I didn't watch uh, no, everything. For me, I say it's really uh, an, an interesting thing because in the UK you don't get that context of Black History Month. I say the US version actually gets, if anything, more media time, which is extremely bizarre. So it's actually quite nice, I think, this year that will hopefully change for the first time in my experience because, yeah, I don't think I heard about it until I was in my 20s, <laughs> which is ridiculous, right? But, it is. Um, how much do you know about Black History Month and how it's been celebrated in the past? To be honest, I should probably do more to look into it and to really research. Um, I know that there's a lot of black history in Glasgow, which I've only recently kind of realised with the whole kind of uprising of Black Lives Matter and stuff. Um, so there's probably a lot more I could find out about it, but I know that there's a big slave trade here and there's a lot of kind of a big slave trade history back home at Liverpool as well. Uh, first of all, I am an African diaspora, that's how I, con I, con I consider myself. So for me, it's time. this time for me it represents um, the time that I like to take to encourage the people who were born here or raised here or who have been here for several generations. So for me, I, I am kind of like accompanying them through their history because for me, I think I already know much about mine, but I think like the people who were born here may not know everything. So I'm just kind of like accompanying them. Uh, black history, very complicated in my head, you know, cross cut by lots of different things to do with class, to do with race, 
and the way that peop um, black people have been situated with that cross-section of class and race together and ethnicity and just a lot of different things coming together to make that, that you know, that the idea about blackness. I, I think for me it's, um, it's seeing myself in a positive light, you know. You grow up and you may idolize people who are not necessarily black because you didn't have those examples. So the, the older I get, the more you start seeing those examples in the limelight. So I want that. I want to see a Lupita Nyong'o times 50. <laughs> She's only one right now. Like, it, you know, I just want to have more and more role models. I myself want to be a role model, hopefully. Um, so it's just being able to be comfortable with who you are. Well, black, black history shouldn't, or black people shouldn't be reduced to a month. I think it's a month where it creates awareness to white people about the struggles, what we've had to go through as black people, especially in the European world and in other places as well just to, to tell them about our journey, see what we've gone through. That, that is what I actually think it is about. Yeah. For me, it's much more about the historical perspectives of how it's taught in education. I think the last few months have really brought some focus onto the fact that it's a topic that's largely avoided in British history because, yeah, let's not mention that. It wasn't great. Um, no one needs to know what happened in Kenya in the 50s. Why on earth would we talk about that? And if you look back, particularly, so my experience in school, I can't think of a single black person that was ever mentioned in history class. Why not? That's ridiculous. It wasn't until like David Olasoga's work where you started to actually be like, yeah, no, black people have been in the UK since Roman times. And you're like, really? Because that sounds like fake news, right? But it's not. Uh, and the fact that that rumor can persist is crazy. So hopefully now there might actually be some focus on it for the first time. And fingers crossed they actually change the curriculums, which would be amazing. <laughs> Well, for me, I think it's really important to recognise that there have been black people in Scotland for years longer than people realise, and it's important to recognise. Oh, black History Month is really important, actually, and just any, any type of black education is really important to me because I have to search out my black heritage a lot, especially growing up in a relatively white community. I have to really establish myself as a black person and I have to search out my black history so stuff like this is really important to help me do that yeah um, and do you guys think that people in Glasgow face discrimination for being black and being living in this area I, I, I'd say there is some discrimination against mm -hmm. yeah um, sadly I, I think there's a lot of different kinds of discrimination yeah. yes I do uh, I obviously get different types of discrimination because I'm mixed um, and like relatively light skin but I definitely think there's a lot of discrimination in Glasgow and I think that sometimes Scotland likes to think it's better than that and like oh no we're this like socialist haven and we don't we don't discriminate here it's like yeah no you do, <laughs> you do. they do it so covertly as well yeah, that you're like no, no, you're no, doing no, it yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I have been enjoying my time in Glasgow um, I've moved here about a year ago, um, but coming from Brooklyn, New York, where it's like much more diverse and you had a higher population of black people, it's still very much was shocking coming here and seeing like the lack of diversity, especially for like a major city in the UK. Um, as far as like the treatment of black people here, I, am, I do believe, of course, like racism exists here. I think it's much more uh, covert than overt. And in a lot of cases you feel like, did I really just experience yeah, racism? Yes, it's very much like you almost feel gaslit in a way. Um, uh, but I will say that I've noticed uh, with a lot of Scottish people that I've interacted with individually, like there is um, this sense of wanting to learn more um, and asking questions and not really like shutting down when you do um, challenge like racism on an individual level. But I do still think there's like a, a long way to go as far as like a societal um, acknowledgement that it does exist and it does happen here. I'm from Edinburgh. So in Edinburgh, um, it's not so bad, I would say. It's kind of like, it's okay, only systemic maybe. But then in general, the people are, well, I heard that Glasgow people are much better than Edinburgh people. So uh, in 
Glasgow, I think black people get treated much nicer than black people in Edinburgh because I think there's no many black people in Edinburgh, so white people in Edinburgh sort of like no use to, you know, seeing foreigners or not only black people, people from elsewhere as well. To be honest, I've only been here since the before lockdown, so I'm still new, you know, I'm still kind of like finding my feet too. There's probably a lot of, I'd say, old fashioned views, which comes with discrimination against people of colour. I have definitely seen it floating around. It's not great. You know, people need to be educated that it just, you're not, you shouldn't say these things, you shouldn't act this way. We're all one, you know what I mean? Like, we're all one and that's exactly how it should be. So um, I'm not for it and I don't think they should be tolerated. I think that people just need to be spoken about it and just educated and that's that. That's all we can do. I personally feel like it's not as, like, obvious, I feel like, the discrimination. Um, it's not too common, but when it does happen, like, it's very subtle. So, like, I think you have to be kind of very alert about it and you have to pay very close attention to know when it's happening. But apart from that, I think, like, over time, slowly but surely, like, discrimination isn't much of a problem anymore. You see, this is what I say about racism here. It's very subtle. Yeah. They deal with us because they have to deal with us because we're here. But racism is institutional and things are better here than in, in England. Yeah, because I've lived in England, I used to live in Leicester and people here are a bit more accepting. But then again, they're more accepting in the cities. Once you go away from the main cities, life is quite different. I work in Stirling and it's totally different there. There are people who even at work ask you, oh, is Africa a, co a country? <laughs> so there is still a lot of awareness that needs to be created there. And Black History Month, sometimes we feel, is it just for us as black people? Like, is it, do they actually care about Black History Month? Do they take a moment to learn about what are these people talking about at this particular time? And uh, we were talking about the judge, uh, Judge Floyd, yeah. I think if it was not for lockdown, he will not have gained as much traction as it has gained. People are sitting down, they have time to listen to us now. And a lot of stuff has to change. So I think for me, the most amazing thing was at the start of Black Lives Matter movement, going to protest with what, 5,000 odd people on Arthur's seat was incredible. I had expected there would be, you know, 100 max, especially during coronavirus. It was, you know, that was right at the start of the lockdown, so everyone was completely terrified of, you know, leaving the house to go to Sainsbury's. But the fact that there was an incredible turnout was brilliant. However, when it all turned around to sort of the Henry Dundas statue thing, that was one of those issues where it kind of made me realise that there's a wonderful kind of liberal feeling of everyone wants to be seen doing the right thing. But if that conflicts with the perception of how proud Scottish people are, now me being English means that I'm come up conflicted in that area anyway, but it means that, yes, we're very happy to accommodate black history as long as it doesn't infringe on our own perceptions of ourselves. And you're like, well, unfortunately, the reality is you do need to confront that issue. Um, and I don't think that's happened yet, but hopefully it will do, because uh, it has to. Um, I think for me, it's, you know, there's a certain shock when, when you come here and... For, for me, especially being very new to Scotland, you, you meet people who are extremely friendly. And the shock that after we've had such protests with you know, Black Lives Matter, I expected such a friendly outcome, which we did see largely. But then there was also the other side of it, where during one of those protests, you also see the counter protests. And that was extremely shocking for me to imagine that there's, you know, there are people who feel like that about your presence. It's almost it's well, very there intimidating. There was only ten of them, so don't give them too yeah, much Yeah, there airtime. were ten of them. <laughs> I'm not giving them airtime, but it's just to say that you know, there's probably a bit more work to be done, and this is just by being present and being unafraid to be who you are, um, and uh, whatever you do. We keep on doing it, you know. You don't have to be 
the best but you keep doing what you need to be doing because sometimes we almost also get this fallacy of having to be excellent no just keep doing what you need to be doing um, and just be present and I think that's enough for the people in Scotland to kind of keep doing especially being black in Scotland because it's very intimidating it's intimate I, I you know personal experience going somewhere and you're completely the only person of your background in that form you just have to be present and keep on being being there and showing up so Perfect. Um, one last question I'm just thinking of, just as we've discussed America and the UK and things like that. What do you guys think on the fact that the UK is the only place to have counter protests with regards to this whole Black Lives Matter movement? So what's your guys' opinion on that? Uh, I mean, I would say it's one of those things where the UK tries to pretend that we're never as bad as America. Which is very cute, and I'm grateful to say that in some ways, yes, that's kind of true. Gun violence is nowhere near as big an issue, which is brilliant. However, let's not pretend that the UK is not racist either. That's, you know, that's a false fallacy. So the way that the, the counter protests are seen to be given equal time is almost ridiculous. I mean, you see the same thing in the climate change debate, because there's an alternative voice. You have to give that alternative voice equal airtime. Well, actually, is that really the right approach? If only 1% of people believe in this alternative voice, why on earth do they get 50% of the airtime? That's ridiculous. Um, so I think the fact that the... The nice thing, though, is that the counter-protests, particularly with the Henry Dundas protest, mm. it was literally 10 people, yeah. and they were speaking utter garbage, and it was hilarious. Um, so it kind of, you would hope, undermines it, but I do feel that the, the reason that they're there, the scary part, is the fact that the media latch onto it, because it's good news, it's interesting news, people are shocked by it, so it makes good content. But by giving the counter-protests more time and airtime, people actually start to believe that's a valid opinion, um, which, in my opinion, it's not. So hopefully it will shut them down but um, yeah it's not happened yet well the thing about the US I think you know you we've seen protests where there was the guy who rammed his car into a crowd of protesters so it's not that they don't have counter protests is that maybe they have a different form in which they choose to counter certain things that happen and in their in the state in the case of the US it'd be picking up a gun which is even worse than the case of the UK. So I would say that they do have counters, it's just in different forms, um, the, in the way that they express themselves. I'd say maybe in the UK, yes, it's bad, but at least they're doing it in a way that's a bit civil, like you know, picking up placards and you've got your few people. So it's different counter protests, but it's there. You, you have people who voted in Trump. <laughs> that's a counter protest <laughs> in, in the worst form, you know, I mean, we, we need to also understand the importance of legislation as a people and the importance of voting and the importance of understanding that part. I think we need to do a bit more there to ensure people are empowered to know that whatever they do in terms of voting is going to count towards who we put into power. So once we understand how powerful we are in that sense and putting the right people in place in the right seats, we, will, we can go further. But for now, that's a, a way in which we kind of are, have been losing to be Losing sounds so awful, but you know, it's it's a way in which we can we can improve our position um, as a people. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for speaking with us today. Hi, guys. Welcome to Africa and Calabar. This is the restaurant in uh, Glasgow, Glasgow, Scotland, UK. You can find us on uh, 57 Union Street, and also it's uh, it's a restaurant, it's a bar, and also like a club. You can come later in the evening to like have fun. However, because of the pandemic season, not yet. So uh, that's all I got. You can also find us on Facebook at African Calabash Restaurant. Thank you.